Tonight, U.S. schools are getting a bunch of money for better internet. Major cities are building apps to compete with Uber. And how much do the big movie studios hate Google? Turns out it's kind of a lot. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 234, for Friday, December 12th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, new templates, and a new incredible feature called Cover Pages. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. The Federal Communications Commission has, appro has, has approved a spending increase of over $1 billion in additional funds to be used towards bringing high-tech internet connections to Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi to schools and libraries across the U.S. The commission says it's the program's first funding reset since it was started in 1997 and is raising its spending cap from $2.4 billion to $3.9 billion. The fund doesn't cover the entire expense of new equipment, but will provide more money to schools and libraries that are located in rural areas or areas with more poverty. The program is funded by a small tax called the Universal Service Fund that's added to all of our phone bills. So the suggested spending cap will mean slightly higher fees, but only around 16 cents more per, per phone line per month. Well, as if it didn't have enough money already, Uber may have a new investor, Chinese internet giant Baidu, which Bloomberg reports plans to invest as much as $600 million into Uber. A Baidu spokesperson says that the company has arranged a press conference for next week when it will announce an investment in and strategic cooperation deal with a prominent U.S.-based startup. If the partnership goes forward, Baidu could potentially give Uber tons of data from its suite of products, which include mobile search, mobile maps, and 91 Wireless, which is one of China's top mobile app stores, which Baidu bought for $1.9 billion last year. Now, on to the Midwest. Regulators in Chicago have basically just had enough of transportation apps like Uber and Lyft or at least they've approved a plan to create their own apps that would allow users to hail taxis from any operators in the city using their smartphone. The plan is part of the so-called Taxi Driver Fairness Reforms Package, which is a plan backed by a taxi union, not surprisingly, and city council members that would update regulations around taxicab lease rates and violations like traffic tickets. And it's not just in Chicago. In New York, a city council member proposed a similar app on Monday that would let residents e-hail any of the 20,000 cabs that circulate in the city on a daily basis. All right, let's talk about Google and who doesn't like Google. And joining me to do that is Alex Fitzpatrick, Deputy Tech Editor at Time. Hey, Alex. Hey, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here as well. So they don't actually mention Google by name, but it seems that there's a lot of internal conversations going on within Sony about Google being a threat. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, it's Sony, it's other movie studios, it's the MPAA, uh, and they don't call Google by name, they call it Goliath, which gives you a really good sense of how they feel about Google. And essentially, I mean, the movie studios and the MPAA have long had it out for Google. Uh, they view it as having not done enough historically to prevent uh, links to pirated content from appearing in Google searches. Uh, so they've been talking about ways to get Google to do that, uh, both through public uh, publicity, publicity campaigns and through legal action. So obviously with the Sony hack, there was a lot of information that got out and, and a lot of internal stuff, you know, aliases for movie stars and, and what executives are making. So what, what was the, the tone of, of these emails that have now leaked out that show Sony, you know, if we were to believe that Goliath means Google, what exactly, what exactly are they saying about Google? Well, they're saying, you know, it, it, they they characterize it as, like I said, they're just not doing enough to, to fight piracy. Um, and these were, you know, this is a sentiment they've had for a long time. Uh, Google a few months ago tweaked their algorithm uh, so that uh, links to torrent sites, for instance, like the Pirate Bay, uh, would drop down pretty significantly in Google search results. That did happen. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, or unfortunately for Google, the MPAA came out with a statement or we're going to come out with a statement per these leaks 
uh, that uh, just didn't really acknowledge what Google had done. Uh, and it seemed like they were pretty furious about that. Well, besides some furious emails back and forth, what actual steps could the movie studios like Sony and others make to strong arm Google into making the changes that they would want? So what the, the emails that were leaked reveal is that the studios have been talking about pressuring state attorneys general uh, to go after Google. Uh, a lot of state AGs have gone after Google in the past for anti-competitive practices uh, and things like that. So there's historically, uh, there's been history with state's attorneys general going after the company. Uh, so the studios are talking about, okay, how do we tap into that and direct the AGs a little bit in terms of doing them what we want, doing getting them to do what we want to do. There was a mention uh, in some of the emails of ways to amplify negative Goliath news. It almost sounds like a political campaign. I mean, it, you know, some, some a smear campaign against Google so that we all don't want to search for torrent sites anymore. I mean, what could they really do to make Google look bad? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you look at Google's uh, fighting uh, antitrust uh, investigations in Europe, so there's that. Um, mm -hmm. Those kind of claims come up here in the States every once and again. Uh, so there are things that uh, the company or the, the movie studios could uh, could take and sort of amplify and, and take these news stories and go to st the state attorney generals or attorneys general and say, hey, look, you know, this isn't a great company and you should do something about that uh, and sort of, you know, kind of plays into this narrative they're trying to build around Google. Uh, the unfortunate thing for them is that most users, people like you and me, I think we have a pretty positive attitude towards Google. Uh, it's a service we use every day. Um, it's a good service. So uh, for them to build a smear campaign against it, it's not as if, you know, it's Uber yeah, like where people don't trust it yet, right? what we would immediately jump to? Right, exactly. You know, not a whole lot of people are going to flock over to Yahoo Search or Bing because <laughs> of the movie studios say, hey, we don't like Google anymore. Well, it is interesting. What do you think about the name Goliath? I, you know, it's, it's, it's almost perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's biblical uh, at its core, and it's uh, it really goes to show you how big of a problem that movie studios think Google is, or how big of a threat it is, and how big of a company it really is. Um, obviously, Google dominates search here in the States. It does more so abroad. Um, and it's, you know, until these tweaks came in a few months ago, it was pretty easy to, to find links to sites that link to pirated content. You know, there's some steps there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is a problem for the, for the movie studio. So it's, if you're, you know, working at Sony, it's understandable that you would think Google should do more and you would hate, you probably hate them for what they are and what they, you know, it's a, what it boils down to ultimately, let's phrase it this way, uh, is just a, uh, a difference in philosophies. Uh, if you're Sony, you're a content creator and you think that your content, it, I mean, it's copyrighted, uh, it belongs to you. There's monetary value there and you should be compensated properly for it. Whereas Google has this internal philosophy of information ought to be free and available and accessible. So there's that clash of ideas there that sort of results in stories like these. Alex Fitzpatrick is the deputy tech editor at Time. And it was so nice to have you on the show. Before we let you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. It's at time.com, Time Magazine. And you can follow me on Twitter at Alex James Fitz. Thanks so much, Alex, and have a great weekend. You as well. Thanks so much. Coming up, Yahoo's Firefox push. Speaking of Yahoo, YouTube's GIF push, and what your shaky camera video might say about you. But first, let's thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7. They're all the way up to 7. Completely redesigned interface makes it really easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I love Squarespace. I've been using them for years. Their customer service is top notch. And Squarespace 7 makes getting easy started easier than ever. It is truly simple to put together a beautiful website in no time at all. You don't have to toggle between a site manager and a preview mode anymore. Squarespace 7 has simplified all of that. You now have instant access to professional stock photography from Getty Images, just $10 each. Very reasonable. Squarespace has also designed category-specific templates 
that are for different industries. Maybe you're, you know, you're you're opening a restaurant or or maybe you've got a friend who's a musician. They could they could use one of those templates. E-commerce is available for all the plans, including the ability to accept donations. And those plans start at just $8 per month and include a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of all of that so you don't have to. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Just start building that website. And when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and you will get 10% off. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T for 10% off. And to begin using Squarespace 7, existing customers go to the settings tab and activate all of your new features. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. On to a few more stories that we're following on Tech News Tonight today. Fresh off a deal with Mozilla, Yahoo has begun encouraging its users to upgrade to the new Firefox with a link in the top right corner of Yahoo property pages. Maybe you've seen that if you've been on Yahoo today. Firefox now uses Yahoo as its default search engine, so the move is not really surprising. It makes sense. Yahoo wants its users to also use Firefox and Firefox's search engine, which is powered by Microsoft Bing. It's clever wording, calling it an upgrade as well. Okay, I've got good news for people who love animated GIFs. You know who you are. YouTube is experimenting with its own built-in GIF maker. So on a video with GIF capability, you would share, then GIF, and then customize your clip. The maximum length is six seconds with options to add top and bottom text if, you know, you really want to go crazy. YouTube has a beta sign-up page where users with channels can sign up for the feature, after which the company says it will contact you about the next phase of the beta testing if you've signed up. Really taking it seriously, YouTube. Microsoft's Xbox One hit record unit sales in November with 1.2 million units sold in the US. That was after a $50 price cut, which probably helped a bit. Microsoft also said in an announcement today that the Xbox One was the top selling console in the UK for the same month. NPD, which provided the data, said total dollar sales from video game hardware in the US declined 23% to just over $1 billion in November as a result of discounting. The Xbox One still trailed Sony's PlayStation 4 in cumulative worldwide sales heading into this holiday season. Finally, this is a good one. Researchers at Cornell University say that they've developed an algorithm that can analyze footage and determine who's wearing a camera, say if you had a GoPro on at a concert or some other event, based on the unique movements of the person wearing the camera. So it's your own shaky camera footage that can identify you. The algorithm analyzes the vertical and lateral motion in a video to identify a unique signature in 12 seconds. Lab tests on 34 subjects wearing GoPro cameras mounted to baseball hats. The software was able to identify who was responsible for each video about 88% of the time. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And as Gizmodo points out, it could help improve accountability if a police officer was wearing a camera and then knows there's a way to tie them back to the footage, right? On the flip side, it could also help law enforcement identify who's involved in a video that shows illegal activities. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I had fun. I hope you did as well. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can, of course, write us with any feedback you might have to TN2 at twit.tv. And, of course, you can watch live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Next week, don't forget to tune in to Tech News Today. That airs Monday through Friday as well, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and if you'd like to help us design our new website, I invite you to visit twit.to slash navtest. We've got eight quick questions we'd like to ask you that will help us make the navigation easier to use. That's twit.to slash navtest. Thanks a lot.